I'm putting up a set of videos here to uh, uh, discuss the uh, the semester uh, challenges that I have uh, given uh, to my classroom. I want to uh, right now to continue this discussion on converting the base of a number. I want to convert from base 10 to some other base. Um, now it's um, fortunate that Excel actually has some built-in programs uh, for doing conversions like from base 10 to base 2 or base 10 to base 8 which is octal. Uh, but I want to show right here a little bit how we could write a program to convert from any uh, base 10 number uh, to uh, to a, a number represented in any other base. Uh, and I have this sheet uh, showing what we have done so far in our discussion. And um, right off the bat, I'm looking at this and I think I want to uh, put in a few uh, cells up at top, but I don't have any more room here at top. So what I'm going to do is copy all these cells right here. So what I first do is I select all of them by clicking here and clicking here. Here is the last cell. I select all of the cells. Oh, that didn't work. Um, there. Select all the cells. Um, then I do a cut and paste. Or I cut here and now I want to move down several spaces and perhaps paste right here. Paste. Gives me a warning. Uh, I think we'll be okay. Uh, clear. Okay, so here's my cut and paste. Now what I want to put on top is the number in base 10. And then I want to um, also put there uh, what, the, uh, what the base that we're going to do to convert. So I'm going to move this line up a little bit further. So uh, here I start off and I say I'm going to type a number to be converted in base 10. I think I'll merge these two cells right here. Um, format, cells, uh, alignment. Now, as I've said several times, that uh, each version of Excel has menu items in, in different drop-down menus, and it's kind of annoying. I'm using an old version of Excel, Excel 2008 for the Mac. So here I've merged these two cells. Now I'm going to type here uh, number in base 10. So this will be the number that we're doing at base 10. Uh, equals there. Um, and now I'll hit return. So there it is. Now I want to move it over to the right side. Uh, so I'll do that, let's say, by going down here and clicking on this. Oh, it's not selected. Uh, clicking on this and moving it all over to the right side. Now here I'm going to put the number. The number I have in this particular example is 101, uh, decimal point 101. So let me put that in here for now. 101, decimal point 101. So there's my number in base 10. I can move this over to the right side by clicking here, like that. So there's the number. Now, the integer, okay, now I want to put base, new base, number, do base. So I'll, let me just put uh, right in here, I'll put new base, new base, uh, equals, just like that. I'll move that over to the right. Uh, you know, these are not, um, these are grayed out. And to get them not grayed out, I click on this, and then I click on that. That moves it over to the right. My new base is 5. So I'm going to put 5 here and uh, hit return. And now I want to move that over to the left. So I click on here and I move over to the left like that. New base. Now I'm going to take this out right here, this thing out. I'm going to re remove this and this. So I click on these two um, and um, but I have other references to this file, to this right here. So maybe what I want to do is actually move this up here and then hopefully the references I have to the base will follow where that way I don't have to reconnect them to this cell. In other words, I want the references to this cell, but 
to automatically connect to this location. So let me try this. Right here, I'm going to uh, hit, I'm going to select this. I'm going to do cut. And then right here, I'm going to do paste, just like that. And now I'll move it over to the left there. So that moves it over. This I want to delete. So I select it. And I go up to my file. Um, I don't think, let's see, file. Is this where I want to be? Um, no. Let's say edit. And then I want to clear all. So I'm clearing that. There. It clears the text, the formatting, everything that's in the cell when I do that. And uh, now uh, what I want to do is keep the integer. And I'm going to put, I want to put this right over here. So I'm going to take this and this. I'm going to cut and then paste right here. There. Integer equals decimal. Okay, now to get the integer, rather than have to separately type 101 there, I just want the integer part of this number. So let me do that by using the following Excel function. I'm going to put equals, and then I'm put int integer, and then I click on this cell, and now I close parentheses, and that should give me the integer part, which it does, 101. Okay, now down here I want to do something similar for decimal fraction. Okay, so I'm going to uh, click on this. Let's see. Notice this is supposed to be fraction. I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to click on this and click on this and then type format cells merge there, that moves that over. Now for this, I'm going to click on this and to get the fractional part of this, I'm going to take this number and subtract that number. So I put right here, I put equals. There, I'll put equals. Delete this right there. I don't want that in there anymore. Equals uh, this minus this, hit return, and now I get the fractional part right there. So this is uh, I'm now changing my, uh, my program from before. So hopefully my references that were to the base down here, uh, because I cut and paste back up here and just didn't retype it, those uh, references to that number five are going to stay connected. Okay, now um, the problem that I'm trying to overcome, specifically in the uh, integer conversion. Now, if you're using the automatic conversion uh, functions in Excel for base 2, base 8, and so on, um, when um, you, you, everything works fine. But if you remember um, the process I go through for the base conversion, what I actually have to do is read these numbers off backwards. So the base uh, conversion number would be 401 rather than uh, uh, rather than uh, 104. Uh, so 101 uh, here converting to base 5 looks like 401. Okay now Unfortunately, if I start on the right side and I start reading back, I'm going to get a lot of zeros in front of the four. And that is, uh, you know, I get, we can work with that. And if I were just doing this for myself, I'd be tempted to leave it that way. Uh, however, if you're going to be passing your Excel sheet on to someone else or using it down the line, you may not. You may want to remove any kind of uh, sloppy formatting uh, to improve the understandability of the Excel document. Okay, so what I want to do is then is figure out rather than putting zeros from here on out, and it's going to keep putting zeros. And I know that is because whenever I get a zero zero, um, everything's going to be zero forever after. 
So what I want to do is not actually put an entrance into these cells whenever I have a zero zero. Okay, so let's uh, let's imagine. I want to stop my computing or or stop at least writing into the cells. So let's look at what's in these two cells. This is the integer of O6 divided by O2. Now, this is O6, and O2 is, and this is a, is right, okay, sorry. Here is O6, and here is O2. So it did make that reference back here that I wanted when I cut and paste. Um, and then this is mod O6 divided by O2. Now remember that the dollar sign, putting a dollar sign in front of that uh, means that that reference, as we, as we cut and drag uh, rules, uh, the references change in Excel, which usually is convenient, but sometimes not. And to make it so that particular reference remains O2 as we drag across, uh, we put dollar signs in front of them. So what I want to do is I want to check if this, if this is zero and this is zero, I don't want to put anything ever after on this. So how do I do that? Um, well, let's try one way in particular and see if that works. Now, uh, I'm going to want to use um, if statement and an and statement and a concatenate statement. Now, already I use the concatenate. For example, when I write this number in the cell, the command is to concatenate cells from T7 out here on back. Now let me add T8 there too. So since I have a drug over T8, comma, because now T8 is here. In fact, U is there too. I'll leave it out to here. Okay, now T8. Now this concatenate, what it does is it takes the number or the cell contents and it puts that First, let me show you here. So this zero goes here. This zero goes second here. The next zero goes third. And I keep going down until I get to the four, which is here. And then that goes in there. Then the zero goes in there. And then the one. And it tells me that this is the, uh, let's see, I don't think that we'll find out. I don't think that's really an error. Then, then this is the number we get. Okay, now what I want to do is not put all these zeros out here. So first let's examine a couple of cell functions. I'm going to examine the if function. Uh, so if, now I'm just going to make up some numbers. Let's say I'll look at whatever is in cell O2. If uh, O2 if parentheses O2 is greater than 4. If O2 is greater than 4, in this case what's in O2 is 5, I print a 1, and if not I print a 0, and then I put close parentheses. Let's see how that works. Okay, and I forgot to put an equal in front of the if. I have to do that or it doesn't recognize it as a function. Equal. So, it says if O2, and it, yo didn't get in there. Okay, O2, greater than 4, I want to put a 1. Okay, so O2 is 5 and it's a 1. But if I change that and put O2 less than 4, let's say, I should get a zero. Let me look at that. That works. Now suppose I wanted to put nothing in there if O2 is less than 4. Let me click on that. If O2 is less than 4, I want to write no characters whatsoever. And I do that by putting a quote and no space 
and another quote, hit return. And then it puts nothing in there. Okay, so maybe I can use that if statement content here. I keep, okay, there. That if statement here to make it so on, the, on these cells right here where nothing ever happens, uh, I, when I write them down here, I don't want to write 0000, zero, 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 zero like that, okay? So what I want to do is I want to check these two because once I get a zero on top of a zero, <clears throat> by the way I set up the formulas, everything else down here is going to be zero. So I want to put nothing here and nothing here if in fact these two computations were going to come out to be zero. And what are these two computations? So I um, might still use this if statement here. Use this if statement. But now I want to look at not if this is true, but if two other things are true. If this is zero and this is zero. Now to do that, I use an and statement. So let me write an and statement underneath here. So I'll write, let's say, uh, if the following is true. If, and I'll put and. Now, this is the way Excel does and. Uh, it's not the most intuitive because I would put the and between the two cases. In other words, x less than 0 and y less than 0, but it does it this way. We do the and first and, and then we put a statement in here, and that statement can be true or false. T-R-U-E. If it's true and true, R-U-E. So if I have two true statements in there, the result of the end is true. Now, I forgot to put my equal sign again. Let me put that there. Equal. Now return. So if two true statements are true, the output of the end is true. But if one, either one is false, let me make this one false. F A L S E return, the output of the end statement is false. So um, the end statement, both things have to be true. Okay, now I want to combine an if statement and an and statement. And um, so. I want to do if an and is true, then I'm not going to print anything. Otherwise, I'll print what I would have put in otherwise. Okay, you understand what I'm saying here? So let's look at these two statements again, right here. This one and this one. So let me look at this. Let me put if, if, and now remember, if is going to have the and, then there's going to be a comma, and then something, and then if it, if the result of the end is true, it does something, and if the result of the end is false, it does something. So just let me just put something in there so you see. Let me put if it's true, I'm going to put out a one, and if it's false, I'm going to put out a zero. Oh, that didn't do right. One. Now I want to put out a zero. So if this and is true, I print a 1. If this and is false, I print a 0. Let's see if that works that way. I get a 0. Now let's make them both true. And I get a 1. So the if statement, the if is checking the, the truth of what I put in this first place to the left of the first comma. Okay, now what I want to put in there, if and, true and true, then I print a 1. So right now what I want to do is look at this, look at this here and look at this right here, and then I will output a, uh, a true uh, a 1 or a 0, depending on what those, um, the, what those results are. So let me look at if and. And now what I want to say, if, instead of putting true here, I'm checking, see am I right here, I, I'm doing it here, if true, 
I want to check to see if this is zero. If this is six, this is O six. So if O six equals zero, and if O seven is zero, it will print out a one. And if it's not true, it prints out a zero. Now, what I don't want it to do is print out a one. What I want it to do is not print anything. To do that, I put a quote followed by a quote. I hit return now. So, it's, I have if O6 equals zero, and for some reason, oh, I didn't get the O in there. Let me write O, and O7 is equal zero there. So let's see, this is 06 and 07, and it's printing out a zero, so that means they're both not true, and 06 is a zero, and 07 is a four. Now what happens if I take this and I slide it over one? I slide it over one, it doesn't print out anything because the 06 and 07, which are this and this, are now replaced by P6 and P7. Let's check that. See P6 and P7. P6 and P7 are both zero. So that is um, not printing out anything. Okay, now uh, one more thing I want to do here is instead of putting 06 and 07 are zero, uh, I'm going to want to put in the uh, uh, the function that actually computes these numbers. Okay, so I will start that with the next video, uh, and um, uh, see you see you later.